Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hoop. And today I want to ask you a very relevant question. Is there any hope? We're living in a time of darkness and woe. A world full of hate and self-hatred. A world of division and secret plotting. A world that seems to be bent on delivering hopelessness to its people. It leaves you feeling like the song by Loretta Lynn and Ernest Tubb, bartender. In the song, Loretta is feeling hopeless and in despair. There's nothing or no one that, that seems to be able to help her. So she tells the bartender about her problems. And this is what she says. With nothing left to live for, what's there to do but die? If you're feeling that way, I encourage you, do not give up. I understand that the world and the way it is set up is not in our best interests. I understand it leaves you drained and discouraged. I understand that. So if that is where you are this morning, then this message, is there any hope? It's for you. Turn with me, please, to two portions of Scripture. First one we'll read is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, and then we'll continue reading Matthew chapter 24, verse 21 through 22. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, Matthew 24. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Perilous times are prophesied for end time dwellers, and therefore perilous times are coming. Jesus said that a time of great tribulation, such as never was and never will be again, is coming upon the earth, and I believe that it is here now. Or at least it's started. It might not be in its full flesh, full capacity, but it has begun. The elect, which is us Christians, will also experience dreadful and trying times. Otherwise, God would not have to say he would shorten those days for the elect's sake. Believe me when I say that those days are here now. They have begun. God is hated and his people are despised. There are those who are trying to cause chaos in the church. And those who say that they love Jesus, but they're secretly servants of Satan, are throwing Christians into confusion and dividing the body of Christ. You can read about it in the news. Whole denominations are split over matters that were settled centuries ago, even millenniums ago. They're throwing the church into confusion. But the good news is he is watching. God is watching. God is waiting. And when it becomes too much for his people, he will cut those days short. He will come and he will get us. He will deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. He will deliver us from these terrible times. He has not forgotten us. He is not going to leave us to the mercy of the world. He is not going to leave us to the mercy of, of haters and I just leave us there forever. No, he will not leave us. Neither will he forsake us because he loves us. But we can't become cynical and return hate for hate. Jesus said that if we truly love him, we will also love one another. We will love our neighbors as ourselves. We will show love. So if love is lacking in your actions, if love is lacking in your walk, if love is, act, uh, is, is lacking in your, in your um, talk, then you had better check your spiritual thermometer. The world is full of darkness and the wealth of nations are transferred to the super wealthy. And no one seems to realize what's going on. No one seems to actually care. The laws that are supported and passed are designed for evil and not for good as they might appear on the surface. 
Take for instance in New York. A column written in the NewYorkPost.com read, and I quote, New York City's war on drugs is over. The junkies won. New York Police Department waved the white flag last week upon orders to surrender from Albany, directing officers to let drug addicts freely shoot up on city streets, even let them share needles. Effective immediately, members of the service should not take any enforcement action against any individual who possesses a hypodermic needle, even when it contains residue of a controlled substance, states a directive to the NYPD commanders issued Friday and obtained by the Post. Senate Bill 2523, cited in the order to street cops, decriminalizes the possession or sale of hypodermic needles and syringes commonly used by addicts to inject drugs as heroin, end of quote. The city of New York has deemed their citizens to be a hopeless cause. They are a hopeless case to their officials. They have declared them to be beyond help. They are blatantly saying there is no hope for you, citizens of New York. You are hopeless. We give up on you. We're not even going to try. But I'm not the only one of this opinion. Listen to what the Post went on to say. Quote, this is outrageous, railed real estate executive William Abramson, who presents residential and commercial clients around the city, many of whom have complained to him about addicts found whacked out in their stoops and doorways. Once again, quality of life in New York City continues to deteriorate because of laws that do not consider the residents and businesses of the city. We all agree that something needs to be done to help addicts, but letting them shoot up on the streets does not help anyone. This is bad for everyone, end of quote. The residents and businessmen of the city of New York feels like there is no hope. They're wondering, is there any hope? There is no hope in government officials. There is no hope in the community at large. Where is the hope? Everything just seems so hopeless. Well, I'm here to say there is hope. Jesus is the hope. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. It is all about Jesus. He has the hope. So yes, there is hope. Praise the Lord. Advisory.com stated that from 1999 to 2018, suicide rose. 35%. CNBC's headlines read, 51% of young Americans say they feel down, depressed, or hopeless. More than half of young Americans are feeling oppressed. They're feeling hopeless. They feel they live in a world that offers no hope. How sad of a statement is that? You know, the article went on to say that in June 2020, the CDC released data that suggests one in four adults ages 18 to 24 have considered suicide, end of quote. That is four young adults between the ages of 24, uh, 18 and 24. One of them is contemplating suicide. Every four you see, one is contemplating suicide. That is a sad, sad state. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who believes that that is an outrageously high percentage of hopelessness. I want you to listen to the rest of the article. Let me quote it. Young people reported a range of serious mental health symptoms in Harvard survey. A startling 68% say they have little energy. 59% say they have trouble with sleep. 52% find little pleasure in doing things. 49% have a poor appetite or are overeating. 48% have trouble concentrating. 32% 
are moving so slowly or are so fidgety to the point that others notice. And 28% have thoughts of self-harm. End of quote. This Harvard study is even more alarming. It suggests that it's closer to one in three young people who have thoughts of self-harm. 100 years ago was known as the Roaring Twenties. The stock market was booming, automobiles was introduced, and money seemed to be flowing. Everybody was in a state of celebration. Today the report reads, approximately 35% of black respondents and 31% of Hispanic respondents said they experienced bouts of severe depression, triggering thoughts that they would be better off dead or hurting themselves. That is 35%. People are feeling more and more hopeless as time goes on. We're giving them no hope, nothing to look forward to, and nothing to hope for. Even those who claim Christianity is becoming overwhelmed with life and taking their own lives. I believe Jesus is the only hope and our government and society has taken away the only real hope in this life. There's no other hope except the hope in our Lord Jesus. The early church called the return of Christ the blessed hope. They look forward to that blessed hope. They put up with anything in exchange for the hope in Jesus. Look at what the writer of the Hebrews said. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 32 through 35. Remember those early days after you have received the light when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourself had a better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. They had confidence in their hope. Their hope was not in this world. Their hope was not in government. Their hope was not in themselves. Their hope was in our Lord Jesus. Their hope was in Almighty God. Their hope was in Jesus, our Redeemer. So, the writer was advising his readers. He was saying, please do not throw away your confidence now. You have come too far. You have come too long. Hold on to the end. You will be richly rewarded. There's something great in there for you. Hold on. There is hope. Jesus, when he was on the earth, saw the crowds and he felt sorry for them. Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus was preaching. He was teaching. He was healing the sick. But when he looked up and he saw the crowd, he saw how many there were. His heart went out to them because of the harassing spirits and the helplessness of their situation. It's the same thing today. Not much has changed. People are still harassed. People are still sick. People are even more overwhelmed. Jesus came to bring hope to the hopeless, and that's what we've got to preach. The, 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 the writer of the book of Hebrews said that they put up, those old saints, they put up with all sorts of things because they had a better hope. What better hope? than the hope that Jesus has to offer. The hope of eternal life, the hope of no more suffering, the hope of no more persecution, the hope of no more hardships. For all those hardships will pass away when Jesus will usher in the new when he comes back to get us. It will be a time of blissfulness with no more worries, no more hopelessness, a time of rejoicing, and, and a time of reunion with our loved ones and our friends who have gone on before us. It will be a great celebration because God will put all things under the feet of Jesus. 
What a time of rejoicing that will be, the song says. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She had gone through a whole lot and probably had lost hope until she heard Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house to heal Jairus' daughter. There was a huge crowd that was following Jesus. This crowd was looking for hope. Look at what Mark says about this woman. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. And she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. Maybe you're sick. Maybe the doctors have given up on you. Maybe you feel like there is no hope for you. That your situation is a hopeless one. There's nothing left to do now but die. I'm here to tell you that where there is life, there is hope. Do not give up. Do not believe the lying deceiver who whispers thoughts into your head and make you believe that they're your thoughts. Or maybe he might make you believe that they're Jesus' thoughts put in there by Jesus. The devil is a liar. You shall live and not die, says the Lord God of hosts. Claim that for yourself. Believe it. It is yours. Remember what Paul said. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21 through 23. So let no one boast in man, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or light or death or, or the present or the future, all things are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God. Every promise ever uttered from the mouth of Almighty God is yours. Claim it today. Say, I belong to Christ. Therefore, his promises are my promises. I, li I will live and not die. I shall be comforted because joy comes in the morning. I shall see the good side once again. The woman with the issue of blood suffered much under the care of many doctors until Dr. Jesus was on his way to pay a house visit to a very sick little girl that was in a, in a hopeless situation herself. Well, it was a seamlessly hopeless situation. So hopeless, in fact, that she actually died before Jesus could even get to her. But even then, her situation was not a hopeless one because Jesus came and he raised her back to life again. Praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord and master over hopelessness. Jesus is Lord and master over death. And he is Lord and master over any and every situation that can ever befall you. So believe in Jesus. Put your hope in him. The woman with the issue of blood was not getting any better. Her health was deteriorating daily. Matthew said, or, or sorry, Mark said she grew worse. Her hopelessness was turning into despair. She was giving up hope of ever being healed. If that is you this morning, I encourage you, please do not give up. Do not give in to harassing spirits that say you have no hope. There's no hope for you. The devil is a liar. There is hope in our Lord Jesus. The woman said, if I could only but touch the hem of his garment. I don't have to touch him himself. All I need to do is touch what is touching him. And I will be okay. I will be made whole. All I got to do is to touch that. Just the hem. I don't have to touch the whole garment. I just need to touch the hem of that garment that is touching him. And I will be made whole. And that's what she did. She encouraged herself. She kept on saying it. She did what King David did in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. The King James Version says it this way. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Hopelessness and despair had taken over these warriors. Men hardened from the wear and battle broke down and cried like babies because the Amalekites had burned their homes. They had kidnapped their families and they had stolen 
all their wealth. Each man was sorrowful. Each man was grieved in his heart. They saw no hope. They heard no hope. They had no hope. These war-hardened men were in a state of hopelessness. But David, the Bible tells us, encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And I'm here to tell you today, there is hope in the Lord Jesus. Encourage yourself in that there is hope in our Lord Jesus. I don't know what you're going through today. Maybe you're dealing with grief like those men were dealing with. Maybe you lost a, a, a loved one due to the coronavirus, COVID-19. Maybe the lockdowns and restrictions are getting to you. Maybe you, you were laid off, you lost your job because of, of COVID. And you feel hopelessness creeping in. I'm here to say there is hope. It's not a cliche. It is the truth. Believe in God. Also believe in Jesus who died for you and who is coming back to get you. He is coming back to get us all. Believe. These things that, that, that we must endure now are only light afflictions and they cannot compare to eternity. They cannot compare to what Jesus has in store for us. Remind yourself, if I can only but touch the hem of his garment, that will be enough. I will find hope. I will find healing for my disease. I will find a cure for my sickness. I will find peace for my troubled mind. I will find serenity for my depression or my anxiety. That this is not the end. I will recover. I will live and not die because I have a hope in Jesus. The only true hope. The only hope that is given to man by which we can be saved that we can live forever. Jesus is the hope. So encourage yourself in the Lord. Think on these things, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think I'm healed, you will be healed. But if you think I'm sick and there is nothing that can be done for me, you've lost the battle. You've been defeated. Say instead, say this, I will live and not die. I have salvation in Jesus because Jesus loves me and he died for me. Jesus is coming back for me. The God of all creation is interested and he cares about little old me. So I want you to be encouraged today. So to answer our question, is there any hope? Yes. Yes, a thousand, a million, ten million, a hundred million times, an infinity times. Yes, there is hope. There is hope. Jesus is hope. Jesus has not forgotten about us. He has not abandoned us. He said he will be back. He has a very special eternity planned for each and every one of us. So, even if they do take away our stuff, it's only stuff. Th those things are temporal. It's, it, it, it might seem like it's hard now, but put in context of eternity, you will find that these little hardships are only light afflictions like Paul told us. So I wanna ask you, do you have that assurance do you have that hope? Do you have the assurance that Jesus loves you and that he's coming back for you? If you don't, you can. All you have to do is to ask for everyone that asks will receive. Would you like to receive Jesus today? If you would, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I accept what Jesus did for me on the cross of Calvary. I accept his blood that was shed for my, for my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help me to live for you. Help me to put my faith in that hope. The hope that is found in you, Lord Jesus. 
And I give you thanks in Jesus' name. If you, if you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And again, I want to encourage you, there is hope in Jesus. There is hope. There is hope in Jesus. So if you pray that prayer, I want you to get a Bible. Buy a Bible or dust your Bible off. Get a highlighter. Read that Bible every day and highlight those verses that are meaningful to you. Learn those verses. Memorize those verses. Find yourself a Bible-believing church. Not one of those churches that, that, that are progressive churches. One, but a church who believes that there is a right way and a wrong way. A church who still believes in the power of Lord God. The power of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, who still believes that there is hope on this side of eternity. If we don't have hope, what good? What good is believing? We have hope. So join that church. Be disciple in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. I want to say thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.